Hey, Grand Marquis, buddy. Oh, his is a fourth gen. All right, what's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis. Up front is a 4.6 liter V8, and down below is a four-speed automatic transmission. If you'd like to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. I'll be writing a complete article about the Mercury Grand Marquis. But let's get back to that 4.6 liter V8. Well, we've dealt with this engine a lot on the channel. It's the modular V8 from Ford, 4.6 liter. They put it in their Crown Vicks, their Explorers, a bunch, a bunch of different platforms throughout history. And it's a really solid, really reliable engine. Now, I will be talking about it a lot more later on in the video, but this is the third generation of Grand Marquis. I do have a review for a fourth generation up on the channel, so I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video. But the third generation did get a slight upgrade to the 4.6 liter where it had coil on plug ignition as opposed to your regular ignition setup on the previous generations. But other than that, it's really the same old 4.6 liter. And while this car does have 130,000 miles on it, it feels super smooth. The whole driving experience is really, really smooth. It does have a four speed automatic transmission and it hasn't been bothering me you know, the more and more I drive these sort of, really, this is a 90s car. I know it is 2000s, but it was assembled in the 90s. It was designed in the 90s. Ford actually kind of got automatic transmissions right in the 90s. If you guys saw my Lincoln Mark 8 review, it had a really solid, really smooth transmission. And the same goes for this. They are essentially the same transmission between the Lincoln Mark 8 and the Mercury Grand Marquis but it's just, it's such a smooth, solid transmission. You know, other auto manufacturers really struggled with automatic transmissions, honestly, up until recently. This, this is a solid automatic transmission from the 90s. And last but not least, the Grand Marquis is rear wheel drive. And I really like that. You guys know that I prefer rear wheel drive vehicles. If you guys know, I, I usually tend to yell in my reviews because, you know, there's so much going on and I have to focus on the road as well as you know, try to say insightful, insightful things. But I really don't have to yell. This is a very relaxing, very nonchalant experience. I'm driving nearly reclined. <laughs> I mean, it's really like I'm sitting on the couch watching a football game. I can steer with one finger. I wish that there was a third spoke on the steering wheel just so I could rest my finger at the bottom and steer that way. But you could steer it with one finger. No, you can't take corners fast. You will kind of slide around. And I'm sure in the rest of this video, you'll notice me sliding around. But it's just so comfortable. It has this sort of no rush to it. The V8 will get up and go, sure. But it'll get up and go like your uncle gets up and goes to the table for a second round of desserts. It's not the most rushed thing in the world. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauge pods. In the center is my speedometer. On the left is my battery voltage and fuel. And on the right is my coolant temperature and oil pressure. I really like this setup. It's very easy to see, very easy to read. And I appreciate that. One thing about the gauge cluster though, is that <laughs> The unbuckled chime, I'll, I'll show a video after I'm done talking about it. The unbuckled chime is so loud and annoying. I never realized it on any other Panther platform. It's so loud and annoying. It sounds like there's incoming missiles. So I'll play it here. On the steering wheel, all I have is cruise control options. And I like that. The steering wheel isn't bad. Like I said, I wish that it had another spoke because it's sort of way down low and almost looks like an oval, which is sort of odd, but that's okay. To the left of me, I have my headlight switches as well as the panel dimmer switch, which is an interestingly shaped switch. I don't know if I've ever seen a switch like that in a car, at least that I can recall. On the door, a couple interesting things. First of all, I have the window switches, which automatic down, but not automatic backup for the driver, everyone else, regular switches. I have my power mirrors, window locks, that sort of thing. Now, I did point this out in my Lincoln Mark 8 review that the unlock lock button says U and L. I had never seen that before. I thought I had never seen that before, but that does carry on to the fourth gen Grand Marquis. Thank you, Roy, for pointing that out to me. 
and on the door I actually do have power seats so they are power adjustable seats you can go forward and back or you can tilt the backrest forward and back as well in the center we do have the stock 2000 grand marquee radio nothing really too crazy there besides the fact that it is what it is i mean it has a cassette player no cd player but honestly this day and age i'd rather be stuck with a cassette player than cd player because you can get a cassette to aux conversion and then all will be right with the world down below the radio you do get a digital clock i really do like that it's very easy to see it's mounted in a good spot you know some auto manufacturers don't really take an account for glare and i i think mercury really has and i think it's in a good spot down below the clock you do get your climate control options high low hot cold and then you can direct the air wherever you want it to be then you have cup holders as well as a 12 volt cigarette lighter that comes out of the dash i know it's not a cigarette lighter i know it's just an outlet it's what i've always called it really nice clean simple here now Let's talk about the seats. The seats are essentially Lazy Boy recliners that have been bolted to the chassis. I've said this many times before. The Panther platform, these cars, Crown Vicks, Grand Marquis, Town Cars are all super, super plush, super, super comfortable. And it honestly, for the 90s, for American cars, it doesn't get better in my opinion. I've yet to drive a better American car from the 90s that's more comfortable than a Grand Marquis or Crown Victoria. Now it is a four door, so we will do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis. And the first thing, Panther platforms, they always seem to be a little bit, just a little bit underwhelming when it comes to the space in the back. I always expect it to be like a, a tap dancing room back here, you know, that amount of space. And it, it's really not. My knees do sort of hit the front seat and this was my driving position i mean you have such a laid back driving position this seat could be moved up so much but i i think it's really important to test cars back here in my driving position because that's this is what my rear passengers would feel like that being said it's not uncomfortable by any stretch of the word very comfortable back here the seats are just as plush if not more plush no center console the other thing i find kind of funny is that the third gen this is a third gen it has the old style back seats. It has this sort of like, I don't know what it is. It, it, it looks like a, like a metal for the buckles back here, which I think is really, really cool. I have power windows. I do have ashtrays in either doors. So really if the front occupants share an ashtray and each person back here gets their own ashtray, everybody could be smoking. But other than that, really comfortable back seats, plenty of headroom. Headroom is not an issue at all. And actually visibility is really good. These headrests are sort of short. You can kind of see the entire vehicle from back here, which is really, really neat. And you do get these handles on the door, these sort of grab handles, which double. It's a nice place to rest your arm if you're contemplating life in the back of a Mercury Grand Marquis. Hmm. Overall, I like the interior. Like I said, it's comfortable. I don't, I don't really like how beige everything is. It's, it's very dated it has the fake wood grain it says grand marquee precision track on the wood grain but overall it's a nice interior it's a nice place to be if you're going to spend a lot of time in the car this is definitely a nice place to be i would love to take one of these on a road trip i'd absolutely love it because the miles would just melt away the ride is comfortable and the interior is very very comfortable now i normally don't talk about it but let's talk about the trunk. The trunk is absolutely massive. It is so big. The owner purchased 100 two liter bottles of soda and fit them all in the trunk. I have a photo here. There is so much more room. He could have bought so much more. It's insane how big the trunk is. I don't know of any modern car that has a trunk that physically large. But the Mercury Grand Marquis has a trunk that big. Now, let's talk about the exterior. I think this car actually looks pretty good. I think this is one of the better looking Panther platforms. Now, surprisingly enough, the wheels are mesh, 
but those are actually hubcaps. This was pointed out to me by the owner, which thank you, Paul, for letting me do this review. Those are actually hubcaps. Those are not real alloy mesh wheels. I really thought that they were. They look like they're sort of starting to age like real alloys, but they're not, they're hubcaps. But I think the car looks good. I think it looks executive, if you wanna call it that. Cut away from the visuals, executive. All right, back to visuals. I love the red, and this is really where you can tell the difference between the third gen and the fourth gen is in the front end. The rear ends are pretty much the same, but the front end, you can tell the difference. The difference in the grille, difference in the headlights and stuff like that. I really don't have an opinion between the third or fourth gen in terms of looks. The third gen does look a little bit more dated. It doesn't look as modern, but then again, the fourth gen lasted from 2003 to 2011. So that was really only eight years ago at this point. So it's obviously gonna seem a lot more modern than this car that was 19 years ago. One cool thing about the outside that was shown to me by the owner is when you turn on the windshield wipers, they go up and down like normal, of course, but then when you turn them back off and they're done doing their thing, they actually go home. They sort of slot down under the hood, which is really interesting. I, I don't know if I've seen another car that does this. Now, other Panther platforms do do this. I was just never aware of this feature. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this review is because this is an older generation Grand Marquis than the one that I reviewed, and I'm always down to see what Ford really considers as an upgrade between the third and fourth gen. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of difference. The interior in the third gen is a little bit less complicated than the fourth gen. The gauges are different. But overall, both cars are very comfortable, and I would really like either one of them. I, I think it just is going to come down to what car you can find with the lowest amount of mileage that's been the most well-kept. Which brings me to my final point about this specific Grand Marquis. Now, this Grand Marquis was recently purchased by its current owner, but it was purchased off of a family who this car was actually owned by an elderly gentleman who recently passed away. We have him to thank for this review, honestly. And we have him to thank for keeping this car so clean and so pristine. Paul, the current owner who's letting me do this review, he was telling me about this guy. And this guy, he might not have been a car nut. He might not have wanted to, you know, beat Ford Focuses on Friday nights, but he really genuinely cared about this car. I mean, look at how immaculate this car is. Panther platforms get used and abused like tissue paper. This, look at how clean it is. The owner was so peculiar about this car that he kept a log of every time it was serviced. He kept a log of every time he drove the car. Not just every time he got it serviced. I'm sure a lot of people do that for resale value and all of that stuff. He kept a log every time he physically drove the car where he drove it, what the weather was like, and if he used air conditioning. So there is a log book that exists of literally every single time this car was driven up until Paul purchased it. We need more people like that in this world. We really, really do. Thank you for keeping this treasure, this slice of history, this slice of automotive history. Thank you for keeping your car so clean, so immaculate, so I, 19 years after this car has been released, I can fully experience what it would have been like to drive this car off the lot in 2000. And we need more people like that in this world. You don't have to be a car nut to care about cars. You don't have to know the specs. You don't have to know the bore and stroke of your motor and what kind of spark plugs each car has. No, 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 you, you don't have to care about that. Just take pride in something that you own. When you buy a car, it's a serious investment and it reflects you as a person. It really does, how you take care of it, how you manage it. And so those people who are like, oh, I don't care about my car and just use and destroy it, it makes me wonder what other things they spend their money on that they don't care about. Do they use and abuse their house? Is their house gonna fall down? And so I, I do genuinely think a clean, respected car shows a lot about a person. It shows a lot of the integrity and loyalty that a person has to an object that they've spent money on. So thank you for keeping this such a clean, well-kept Panther platform.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something about the 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis. If you want to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. I, 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 I